So let's take a look at three usage scenarios. Uh, the first was sensor data visualization only. The second, sending commands as well. And the third, we use AI Builder to make decisions while we interact with the system. So let's take a look at this first usage scenario where we're just getting sensor data. In this example, we're going to use an Android cell phone that has an application running on it that transmits uh, gyro accelerometer and magnetometer data uh, at about 150 data grams per second. Uh, we've targeted the uh, internet address that the Tin Man real-time application is running on. Uh, you can see that uh, in the upper left-hand corner, the data is streaming in. Uh, you have each of the three sensors uh, uh, denoted by a, a certain symbol, and the parsing is done, uh, and the uh, delivery to the subscribing gauges is made. Uh, you can see you have some time series charts there that are continuous and accelerometer, gyro, magnetometer column charts, and then you also have some uh, semicircle uh, custom gauges as well. And then over to the right, you've got a uh, typical uh, flight control gauge. But you can see the system is responsive, and uh, what we're showing here is how quick and easy it is to connect to uh, an internet uh, or wireless system and uh, send wireless data. And you do need to tell Tin Man real time uh, what the parsing prescription is. You need to say the symbol is this control or this uh, sensor. Uh, these are the values of that control, X, Y, Z, for instance. Uh, but this is the kind of uh, responsiveness you can get with a uh, just testing sensors on a system with 10 minute real time. Now let's take a look at the second scenario where we also want to send commands to the system. Okay, for this brief demo, I'm going to use a robotic arm from a commercially available uh, robotics platform we've just hacked into. We've got an arm uh, shoulder servo, a lower arm servo, and a claw for a hand. The UNO board is being used. We've got a serial port connection. We've got a couple of lights, and we've got the um, uh, three lead connectors to each of the servos in the hand. What I'm going to show you is that we can get this sensor data. We know the status of the various positions of the servos. We also can control the lights and the positions of the servos. So I'm going to go over here in real time and load a project I've already created, and I'm going to turn it on. Uh, you can see the data is already flowing in. Uh, from the left arm position. This is one arm of a robot, of course. And uh, we can change the servo for the hand. I'm just using this slider control here that we've configured. Uh, we see the commands going out. Uh, here's the lower elbow, and here is the shoulder servo. So you can see it's pretty responsive. And we've just set up commands. Uh, we send a command, move shoulder, comma, and the angle. Uh, if we want to move the lower, we say move elbow, comma, give the angle, and then the hand. Now, in the Arduino code, we need to re recognize those commands, and we know we do that. We just write, uh, if we've received incoming uh, characters, uh, let's look at those characters, and if they are this command, then let's do these things. This over here is the incoming data for the left arm. You've got the position of the uh, upper arm, which is 113, uh, followed by the forearm, followed by the hand angle. Uh, we can also uh, blink the lights. So I'm just clicking buttons. I've created a couple of commands that send these commands, GRB uh, and Y. And you can see the lights going on and off. And we can just turn all of them on and turn all of them off. We can turn auto blink on. And we've got a little routine in the, uh, in the sketch that makes them auto blink and then turn them off. We also can, I believe, turn auto move on. If I hold this so it doesn't slide off the table, we can see that we got the shoulder and the claw moving. We're trying not to move the elbow. Uh, too much swinging here. But um, so we can turn that on, and then I can go back over there, let it run on its own there, and turn auto move off. Now, in this uh, short video, we're also using the Arduino platform, and we've created a, in the lab here just a, a very primitive prototype for a four fan motor uh, quadcopter. Uh, but we're, what we're doing is the idea is that we want to test the, um, the impact of an IMU um, 3D orientation kind of sensor to 9 degrees of freedom with accelerometer, gyro, magnetometer, uh, and establish 3D orientation. And based on that orientation, then we adjust the, um, uh, the speeds of these motors. And um, there are a couple of things going on here. You've got some charts, and you've got some levers, and you see the 3D orientation. So these levers actually here will control the the speed of those motors, and you can see the responding chart. Uh, so we're sending outgoing commands, but we're also picking up the sensor data and recording that. Uh, several things happening on the screen here, and we can control them individually, and you'll see the, the uh, response of that motor there in the associated video of the system. Uh, but that's a 3D orientation gauge there. And over here, the gr blinking green lights were the uh, data logger components. So we can actually log specifically in different formats what's going on with the system. 
Uh, and here I'm, what I'm doing is I'm manipulating the orientation of that IMU sensor in 3D space to see if it actually does affect those motors. And so this is really effective quick prototyping that you can do with uh, the Tin Man real-time platform and an external system. And lastly, in this uh, most comprehensive scenario, we're going to incorporate AI Builder underneath so that we can design an autonomous flight management engine. We're going to use three applications today for this demonstration. X-Plane 10, uh, Tin Man Real-Time for Sensor Data Visualization, and acting as an intermediary to AI Builder. And then AI Builder, of course, for executing the uh, computations associated with the autonomous uh, engine that uh, was created inside it. Uh, we'll go through three phases. There's the, the runway phase. Uh, there's a number of tasks. And we'll walk through these at a more detailed level in a few minutes here. Um, and there will be the post-liftoff phase uh, where the gear is retracted, the flaps are retracted. Uh, this is all done uh, by AI Builder and its uh, um, AI engine uh, that was designed and is visualized at this point. We're looking at uh, uh, a module that manages role here. But when we get to level flight uh, at about 10,000 feet, we'll level off or reduce the thrust and then maintain our heading. And um, uh, what we're showing here is all three screens simultaneously, uh, much smaller than uh, what we're about to do. So uh, as soon as we're done here in the next five or ten seconds, uh, we'll walk through each of these applications at a more detailed level uh, for about five or six minutes and uh, uh, explain how this is done. Welcome. Uh, we have three applications running. We have X-Plane 10 with an F-22 sitting on the runway ready for takeoff. Um, we have Tin Man uh, Run Real-Time, uh, which has a display set up with a number of gauges that um, will be receiving uh, sensor data. Uh, we have a sensor data template uh, that we've imported for X-Plane 10 uh, that reads the up to 8 to 12 values for any of the 133 sensors on board. Uh, and then we have um, a UDP uh, uh, command strings, any of the 1,071 uh, command strings that could be sent to the aircraft. And um, so we'll be using that UDP data source and that UDP data target. Um, <clears throat> we'll be displaying the data through select gauges that we've placed on the screen, gauges and charts. And we'll be relaying the commands from AI Builder through these uh, white rectangles over here. So if you just look at the vertical uh, line of uh, rectangles for managing flaps and trip, uh, trim up and uh, throttle and uh, uh, gear, uh, landing gear and uh, rudder. You'll see these blink as commands are delivered to uh, X-Plane 10. We have the simulator off at the moment so that we can talk without the plane operating. Uh, the third application is Tin Man AI Builder. We have four modules that we've created uh, and put on the screen. Uh, the system inputs that will be received from real-time uh, well, actually from X-Plane via real-time are uh, just a select set just to do a minimal uh, liftoff to about level flight at 15,000 15, feet. Uh, and, uh, and then we have commands and decisions that are made uh, by AI Builder uh, for managing flaps, brake, throttle, uh, landing gear, and then uh, orientation of the aircraft as it moves through the various stages of this uh, flight plan. Uh, the flight plan itself is to uh, lift off, uh, it's actually to lower the flaps, uh, to increase speed and thrust to a certain uh, speed, to then uh, pull up, um, uh, get your lift off uh, pitch, uh, maintain level flight, uh, bring the gear up, bring the flaps up, uh, increase altitude, and then have level flight at about 10,000 feet. I'm just clicking on the various components here. I won't walk you through the logic within these. Uh, what you what I would urge you to recognize is the simplicity of each of these modules. Um, this in particular is pitch management and there are uh, three different phases, actually four different phases of the flight. One is on the runway, that's a level pitch and um, then there's the liftoff pitch which we're just going to set to about 20 and then there's uh, climbing pitch after you get to a thousand feet. Uh, you'll climb uh, to actually 10,000, that should be 10,000 and we'll set the pitch to 10 and then ultimately we'll have level flight at uh, above that desired altitude. Um, what we're looking at here is we got a single derivative model of managing the change in pitch and uh, how the, uh, the uh, aircraft 
just manages and moves through those various phases. Uh, these right here, these uh, graphical controls, are to simplify the display as you build your logic, and this helps me uh, in, in particular in designing the, uh, the demonstration here. And we can consolidate those enclosed components here uh, so that the screen gets even more manageable. Uh, so you can modularize the visual uh, nature of your logic uh, if you uh, want to simplify the display. And then here is role management, and again, a single derivative model uh, for managing chitter uh, as you move through the different phases, or managing role so it's not uh, choppy. Uh, and so that is the third application. Okay, so we're ready for liftoff. Uh, when I click the uh, radar uh, symbols within uh, Tin Man real time, uh, what that will do is it will allow the receipt of all of the data being sent by X-Plane uh, through UDP uh, into real time for visualization and then also for relay to Tin Man AI Builder. And that will then cycle these uh, decision modules uh, to then relay back these decisions on how to manage the aircraft to uh, Tin Man real time. You'll see these um, uh, white rectangles blink as X commands are executed and then sent and delivered directly to uh, uh, X-Plane. So what I'm going to do is put X-Plane on top. We'll just watch uh, Tin Man real time. And what we'll probably do is do this a couple times so that you can see each of the applications operate entirely. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to click Go. And you'll see the flaps go down two notches. And you can watch the commands get executed here. This one here is uh, signifying uh, full flaps down. Okay, it achieved uh, desired thrust. As soon as we get to about a thousand feet, the gear should come up, and you can watch the. Uh, various commands being sent. The gears are sent up. I'm not touching anything on the display. Turn down the volume here a little bit. And as soon as we get to about 10,000 feet, uh, we should see the aircraft, uh, the pitch drop a little bit. Uh, right now we're at about 18, 19 degrees. You can see that it's starting to level off. Um, I think it's 10,000 feet. We will maintain. We will drop down to a two degree, uh, about a two degree pitch. Um, there we are. We're dropping now. There's the pitch we're looking at. Now you can see the, the various commands that are being sent from Tin Man AI Builder to manage this uh, level flight. This will just continue on. Uh, right now we haven't really done much uh, with the next stages, but we could uh, very well set a heading and it can change uh, and follow that heading. Uh, we can set various waypoints uh, and also uh, bring the aircraft to a landing. Uh, and that's the, one of the uh, demos that uh, I'm sure we'll put out real soon. Uh, but let's go over to, while this is running, let's just go into AI Builder, and you can see that AI Builder is receiving uh, this data dynamically. And if I go into, and it's managing the various actions for the aircraft, you can see the zeros and the ones blinking for pitch up, pitch down, trim right, trim down. So I can very confidently allow Tin Man AI Builder to operate that aircraft. Uh, let me just jump in here. You can see uh, in the role management, this is essentially managing the um, uh, level flight, uh, the roll, uh, trim, the trim of the aircraft, trim left, trim right. You can see a little bit of blinking on the one and the zero here. That's sending the uh, back a command to real time, where you can see uh, trim left and trim right. Those are the commands that are being delivered. If we drop down this command, you can see the actual commands as they're being sent to the aircraft. And this may be, you know, too frequent or not frequent enough uh, for a final system, but at least uh, the aircraft is being managed uh, near perfectly. And let's go back. There's the aircraft, and I'm going to um, uh, stop here, 
and perhaps we dig in with uh, various stages of the flight.